Well, hello for you and welcome to your new units. We're going to be talking about the graphs and equations of trigonometric functions. And so we're going to tar start today with graphing the primary trig functions. Now you did a lot of graphing of the primary trig functions uh, last year in grade 11. Um, and this isn't going to be that much different except that now we're working with um, radians instead of degrees. So our goal, I can transfer my knowledge of graphing the primary trig functions from working in degrees to working in radians. And we're going to start off by recapping what the unit circle is. And so I've drawn the unit circle on here. It goes from negative 1 to 1 on the x-axis and negative 1 to 1 on the y-axis. And if you'll remember that if I put in, uh, if this is theta in here, the distance from that angle to there, and I'm going to draw this in. And if this is the point x comma y for some x and some y, this distance up here is y because it's the distance above, and this here is x. Um, if I want to graph sine theta, uh, I need y over, remember the radius is 1. So opposite over hypotenuse is y over 1, or just plain y. So sine theta is y. So that's what I'm going to graph here. Sine theta also happens to be the distance above the axis. So that is why I've put this right in between the, uh, it, put it right beside this axis here. Now, there are some special points on here that we need to remember. First of all, we need to know that when theta is zero, then we have a line that is right along the axis. And if that line is right along the axis, then its height above the axis is zero. So sine starts at zero, zero. And if it rotated up to here, whatever that theta was, wherever that theta would be in here, we would have it at that height. Okay. But the main ones, the important ones, are every pi by 2, or every 90 degrees. And that is because we have something special happening every 90 degrees. If I rotate up to 90 degrees, my height above the y-axis is now as high as it's going to get at 1. So when theta is rotated through pi by 2, its height above the y axis, above the x axis is 1. So it's got that point there. Then we're going to rotate back around down here, and when it's at pi degrees, or sorry, pi radians, which is 180 degrees, it is now back down to the x axis, so its height above the x axis is 0. So we're going to put a dot on pi and 0. It's going to rotate another um, quarter pi down there, sorry, half pi down to here, uh, and now we're at 3 pi by 2 radians, or 270 degrees, if you're still thinking in degrees, and now we're down at negative 1, so at 3 pi by 2 we're at negative 1, and then we're going to rotate right back up here again, so that we've completed one rotation of 2 pi radians, and after we've gone 2 pi radians, we're right back to where we started from on the x-axis, so our height above the x-axis is 0. So those are our main points, and it's a nice smooth curve if you'll remember. So we just have to join those points with this nice smooth curve. Now I have a little interesting, uh, interesting clip to show you, and this is the ad address up here. Right here is the address of the clip I'm going to show you. Because um, you're going to actually see it rotating around. Now it's in degrees instead of radians, but I thought it was worth seeing. So here it is, um, and I'm going to click on it to start. So, uh, when I rotate, and this is at 45, see how this is going to, this is the sine 45. And so when I move this around, you can see that this is staying at the same height above the y-axis. And then when it gets up to 90 degrees, it's as high as it's going to get, and then it comes back down again. And they're all staying at the same height above the y-axis. As I pull this down, that thing is at the same height. And it comes down to pi, or 180 degrees, and then we're going to go down again, and back up, and now when we're at zero, at 360, or 2 pi, there we are, and we can keep going round and around. Now this goes through two um, cycles, to 200, or 720 degrees, or that would be 4 pi, because we've gone 
um, 2 pi, and then another one is 4 pi. Now, notice down here that it, we were graphing cos at the same time. I can keep going around. Cos is its distance away from the sine or from the y axis. And so when it starts here at 0, when theta is at 0, cos is at 1 because that's its distance away from the y axis. And so when I rotate, it gets closer and closer to the y axis. And when I'm at 90 degrees, it's right on the y axis, so the distance away from it is 0. And then we go around the other way and then back up to zero because we're right on the y-axis again there. And we can go around a second time if we want so that we have that two pi. So this thing um, shows us both uh, sine and cos and how it gets it from the unit circle. And you can go play with that if you want. You'll have to type in part of the address that I had given you here. Uh, it should be on your note. Okay. Um, so. Having a, now looked at exactly where the sine function comes from in relation to the unit circle, let's think about the table of values for all three primary trig ratios. So here we go, and I've graphed the unit circle again, and I've got my little um, <clears throat> cos uh, pi by 2, sine pi by 2. This is all in radians. So let's take a look here. At 0, sine of x, when it's over here, at 0, sine of 0 is 0. But the cos of 0, okay, because this is 0 line, cos of 0 is um, 1 right here. This is the cos of 0, so we put a 1 there. At pi by 2, um, cos 0, or co sorry, cos pi by 2 is 0, and sine pi by 2 is now 1. Back down to pi over here, and our cos of pi, remember cos is the distance away from the y-axis, the cos is now backwards, so our cos is negative 1, and our sine is 0. Down to here, our cos is um, our distance away from the y-axis, so our cos is now 0, because we're right on the y-axis. And our sine is the distance away from the x-axis, and we're now below the x-axis by 1, so that's negative 1. And then back up to 2 pi, um, we're right back where we started from at 0, so I've got 0 and 1. Now, tan, if you'll remember, is sine divided by cos. That's one of our quotient identities. So if I have sine divided by cos, I'm going to take a look at these things here. And sine divided by cos, in this case, 0 divided by 1 is 0. I'm going to skip pi by 4 for now. Pi by 2, uh, sine divided by cos. 1 divided by 0, we cannot do. So that is an asymptote. Uh, I'm going to skip this one for now. Down to pi, right here, sine divided by cos, 0 divided by negative 1 is 0. And then back to 2 pi. Oh, I don't even have 2 pi on here. I have 5 pi by 4 and there's 3 pi by 2. So sine divided by cos for 3 pi by 2 sine negative 1 divided by 0, can't do that one again. And then to 2 pi, we'll be right back to where we started from. So what's going on in the middle? Well, in here, you actually know what this is. Sine of pi by 4 is from our little um, special triangle, the 1, 1, root 2 triangle. And so, and not sine, but tan. Tan is opposite over adjacent, so this is 1. And then all of these tans that are multiples are all going to be either 1 or negative 1, depending on what quadrant they're in, um, for cast rule. And remember, cast rule says that if in, their, in the first quadrant they're all positive, if they're in the second quadrant, which is where this one is, only sine is positive, so tan has to be negative. And then down here, it, this 5 pi by 4 is down in this quadrant, so tan is positive there. Okay, so. What do these things look like? Uh, I'm going to put these on the graph. You might want to pause this and put yours on the graph and then see if your graphs look the same as mine. Okay, and there they are. Notice that the big purple things are the asymptotes for tan. Uh, and the asymptotes for tan occur at pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2. And tan is 0 at 0, pi, 2 pi, etc., etc. 
Um, and sine starts at zero. It's the red one. It starts at zero and it rotates like this. Cos looks very much like sine except it starts at one and then it goes down like that. So it's just the opposite of sine. Uh, so this is what it looks like. And sine and cos go between negative one and one in their untransformed state and tan uh, goes off to positive and negative infinity. So tan doesn't have to be um, just between one and negative one. It actually is going to go from positive to negative infinity, um, but it doesn't exist at the pi by uh, pi by two and three pi by two. Okay, so this says note that every note that every what every pi by two there is a special um, point. Okay, so where are we going with this? Now we're going to take a look at transformations. I'm going to give you a couple of definitions here, and then we'll take a look at how they uh, occur in our functions. A period is the length along the x-axis before the function starts to repeat, uh, and our amplitude is half the distance between the function's maximum and minimum points, uh, or, in other words, uh, the distance... from the midline to an extreme value. So untransformed sinusoidal functions have the following property. Uh, the period of both sine and cosine is 2 pi. And the reason it's 2 pi is because it takes um, 2 pi to get right around the unit circle. Okay. Um, the, the amplitude of sine and cosine are both 1. They go up to positive 1 and down to negative 1, and so that's a difference of 2, and we take half that, and half that is 1. Now, sine and cos do not have asymptotes, so we say it's not applicable. Now, tangent is a little bit different, and you wouldn't have done a whole lot with tangent last year, and to be honest, we're not going to do a whole lot with tangent this year, but you do have to know what it looks like. Uh, the period of tangent if we take a look over at the thing that we just graphed here, um, tan starts to repeat itself uh, every 180 degrees, or every pi, um, because to, I've got this thing here, and then when I go to the other side of the asymptote, it's coming up from the bottom, and so it doesn't start to repeat until I get to this point here. So every pi, we're right back to this first little swoop up. So the period of tan is pi, not 2 pi. The amplitude of tan is not applicable. We do not have an amplitude for tan because it goes from positive to negative infinity. And the asymptotes for tan, as we saw before, the asymptotes occurred at, um, whoops, wrong way. The asymptotes occurred at pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, uh, the next one uh, would be 5 pi by 2, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So they occur every 180 degrees, um, the first one being at pi by 2. So pi by 2 plus, I'm going to say, n pi. Every time you add 180 degrees, or in this case, pi radians, we get another one. So starting with pi by 2, then we add on pi for as many times as we can go. Okay, now how do we graph these things? What is happening to this graph? Uh, sine x plus 2. Well, this is a shift um, up and down. This is a vertical translation. So, and that's, I think that's what this arrow is going to tell us. Boo -doo -doo -doo. It's a vertical translation. Now, instead of oscillating back and forth over top of the x-axis, it will oscillate back and forth over top of the line y equals 2. And so I'm actually going to put that line on here. Um, the best that I can. It's going to be in purple too. Um, so it has been shifted up to 2. So this is 1. So it's been shifted up here. So I'm going to put that line on there. It's not the greatest because I can't do a straight line on the, with this software. but um, And now it's going to go back and forth over top of that. Now sine still starts at 0 and it still goes 1 up from the midline and 1 down from the midline every 90 degrees. So we're going to go up here, down here, down here, 
and up here. So every 90 degrees, I either have to go up one amplitude or down one amplitude. Oh, and I went too far. That's not one. Joop. Joop. This is one, because each one space was one. So I have to go here and here. And then you can just draw that in. Now, if you want to do two periods, you can just follow this pattern backwards. Every pi by 2, or every 90 degrees, I'm going to have another special point that's either at the top of an amplitude or at the bottom of an amplitude. Okay. So this is y equals sine x plus 2. Now, next one. Graph y equals 2 cos x and y equals negative 2 cos x. So what we have here... I'm going to put it on that one. This is a vertical stretch, uh, and this one's also a reflection. The number out front will change the amplitude of the function. It will make it go higher and lower, but the midline will remain the same. And this one is going to make it go uh, the opposite direction. So let's start with this one. Cos used to go, cos starts at, used to start at 1. But since my amplitude is now changed, and this was a top of an amplitude, now cos is actually going to start at 2 and it's going to go back and forth in between 2 and negative 2. So every 90 degrees, this thing is going to go to the top or the bottom of an amplitude, or the midline. Okay. And we can follow that backwards, too. And then graph our cos function. And now this has an amplitude of 2 because each space is one, and that was really wonky thing there. Okay. This is one period. If we followed it backwards, I've now graphed two periods, and that's great. So now I'm going to graph the, um, the reflected one. So instead of starting at 2, like this one did, it's going to start down here at negative 2. And then it's going to continue to do the same thing that this one is doing, just like that. And of course, you can follow it backwards. I'm not even going to put the dots on it. I'm just going to follow it backwards. And that was our, I'm going to put the green underneath that. The green line is the negative 2 cos x. And it's going to continue on doing that. Okay. The last one we're going to look at today is what happens if we've got something in the brackets. This is called a phase shift. And look at that. I've already pulled my little arrow out. Missed that. Okay, this is a phase shift, and it's a horizontal translation, so it's either gone backwards or forwards. Now, we're not going to handle any um, stretches of the periods this time. We're going to do that in the next lesson. Um, but this means for sine that wherever we used to start at has now gone forward. Remember that this little thing in here, when it's inside the function, it's the opposite of what it seems like it should be. It's gone forward pi by 4. Now, each of these spaces here is pi by 2. So pi by 4 is partway in between. So sine used to start at 0. It's now going to start over at pi by 4. Now remember, sine goes between 1 and negative 1. And it might help you, since this one doesn't have a, doesn't have a phase shift, or, or sorry, doesn't have an, um, a change in amplitude. It might help you to put these things actually on and say your sign has to go back and forth in between here. It cannot step out of that boundary. That might help you, and that might help you a little bit more when we start moving things all over the place. It goes over, uh, over top of that. So it has to go back and forth between the midline. It has to start here. And once again, every 90 degrees, it's going to have either a high point, a low point, or a zero. Now, I'm going to show you something that I like to do whenever there's a shift in where this starts. I'm just going to figure out where it's going to end um, because we have to, uh, we know that the regular sign ends at 2 pi because of that one rotation of the unit circle. Well, this one's been shifted forward pi by 4, so this is going to end one space past pi by 2. Now, the easiest way to, to graph sign is not to count pi by 2 spaces, especially since you can, can number these spaces anything and you can get kind of confused, is just to know that when you, when you split apart one period of sine, I know that there's another zero right in between these two zeros. So I can even eyeball it and say, oh, that's got to be the middle. And I know between the first two zeros it has a maximum, 
and between the second two zeros it has a minimum so I can just split the difference there again and there we go and of course I can follow the pattern backwards again and know that every two space oh, I screwed that one up too um, that I just barely hit that oh, that's the only thing Okay, I should have hit that spot here there 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 and there and that's how we do it so there are some questions to do and that completes this video